has been uh, locking this area down, who has controlled this scene in terms of where we are, and he is the one who's going to be able to get us the most information. So we will, uh, again, another officer running across the street, uh, just uh, all trying to lock this area down. Um, as police figure out if this is a credible threat, if this is a device that uh, is posing a threat, obviously the response uh, suggests so. Uh, and Bakersfield Police, as we know in these situations, will be responding uh, a bomb squad. Uh, there is a certain lag time it takes for uh, those uh, units to get uh, ready to go. And uh, I pause uh, occasionally because I'm listening to the police scanner to try to bring you the, the latest here. And we think they're talking about something else. So, uh, as we mentioned, uh, Bakersfield Police Headquarters not too far from this scene. That's why uh, a lot of officers able to get here uh, pretty quickly, along with the uh, technical units here with Bakersfield Police, and shut this area down. Two units on either side, uh, about a two and a half block radius, uh, have been shut down in central Bakersfield as police uh, investigating what they believe to be a suspicious device. Uh, something that uh, they do not take and uh, take lightly, as you can see here in the response. About, uh, I'd say, six to seven units just on the street here. We've seen several units uh, going on the side streets and uh, presumably blocking off some alleyways and some access points because this is a high foot traffic area. Uh, this is a place where a lot of people walk through, uh, and that is why they want to keep this area locked down and... Uh, Okay, we are being told that uh, the media area is actually going to be at 9th uh, Street, which is not where we are. Uh, so we are going to have to go one block. Uh, not sure if that is accurate because that is taped off. Uh, so we are here at 10th. Uh, this would presumably be the easiest place for me, uh, police to find us. Uh, but... If we do have to move to 9th, that's the next street over. I'm not sure how we would do it. Uh, we j I just got word from our producers back in the studio that that's where uh, Gary Caresco, uh, Bakersfield Police Information Officer, is going to be meeting us. Uh, he'll find that that may be hard for us to do because we are uh, behind police tape at 10th and Chester and 9th and Chester is not easily accessible. So uh, we will be staying here uh, until we get further notice along with other media uh, who have gathered here uh, who are at the same location as well. So, uh, again, people, the biggest story here, obviously, in these situations is the impact, right? The people who are, uh, are being turned away, being told that their day is not going to go according to how they thought it would. Uh, this individual here, right in front of uh, this big shoe repair, this looks like to be a home, not a business, uh, in that greenhouse, is uh, moving a vehicle out of the way and uh, going to come through this area here. And, uh, yeah, Bakersfield Police making sure they evacuate uh, every car and every person uh, inside of this radius. Uh, <clears throat> and as we mentioned, uh, we are waiting for Gary Caresco to, to make his way to the scene. We were told to go to 9th and Chester, but I think he'll find once he gets to the scene that uh, 10th and Chester is most likely a better media staging area, just given uh, our proximity. Have you heard if Caresco's coming? Uh, he should be. He told us to go to 9th and Chester. Yeah, they're, they're moving <laughs> on up to... Right here. Okay, cool. Um, I guess that's the car stuff. Oh, perfect. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, uh, yes, just received uh, a little bit of confirmation here from one of the uh, police tech service units. Uh, who, by the way, giving you guys a quick plug, these guys are, uh, are, <laughs> are amazing. Around town, they are quick uh, to respond to these scenes and uh, provide assistance to officers uh, who need to get in there and, and do more of an investigation. They, they certainly help out with traffic control and uh, we're quick to the scene to, uh, to block everything off. So, uh, as we mentioned, the sergeant's car is right there and uh, Gary Caresco with Bakersfield Police uh, most likely going to meet us here at this scene as we watch more vehicles uh, evacuating this area. Uh, again, the big story here in these situations is just the public impact, right? Cars that are told to turn around, uh, traffic shut down, uh, people who were uh, planning to perhaps get their taxes done. You have a uh, Jackson Hewitt and a H&R Block competing companies right across the street from each other uh, who uh, are laying dormant today uh, just a few weeks before uh, April begins and, of course, the scurry to get the taxes complete. Are we still up on... Are we still up? Live stream? Okay. Um, so, we... Uh, <laughs> yeah, certainly uh, we saw a lot of people trying to get through this area 
and uh, they are not able to. So again, if you're just joining us, uh, I, I can see the number of viewers here online growing a little bit. So uh, we want to update folks who are just tuning into this. This is a, a suspicious device found by Bakersfield Police just uh, around 8.30 this morning. The call went out, uh, the first arriving unit on scene saying that they found a uh, they described it as with something on the ends of it. Uh, that's how the call went out, and that's, of course, what prompted this response. And uh, since then, about an hour now, uh, I'd have to check the time, uh, assuming we're about an hour into this, um, Bakersfield Police have uh, shut down the better part of two and a half blocks. Uh, if you're familiar with the uh, Hong Kong Chinese restaurant on Chester, that's where the uh, southern perimeter to the scene is. We are at the north side. This is 10th and Chester, uh, right across from uh, another somewhat landmark here in central Bakersfield, the big shoe repair, uh, where people will uh, be getting shoe repairs, uh, obviously a recognizable business. So this is uh, where we are, and a lot of people turning away as you know, Chester Avenue is uh, pretty heavily trafficked, especially in the morning um, as we head towards Friday. A lot of people uh, making their way to the 58 uh, on Chester. They'll have to uh, do that from another route, go around some of these side streets uh, for about two or three blocks, and then you can hook over left uh, back onto Chester once you get past uh, right, right around 6th Avenue. Uh, you'll be able to hop back onto Chester and make your way. Uh, through to your destination. So, uh, a bit of a nuisance, but of course, out of an abundance of caution, as Bakersfield Police have found what they believe to be a suspicious device. We heard uh, dispatchers get on uh, the police radio just about 20 minutes ago and put out a description of a suspect, uh, and that's what may have kicked this whole thing off. Uh, they said that someone was, uh, again, this is all unconfirmed. This is just what we hear on the scanners. We'll pass it along to you. Uh, that an individual walked out of one of those businesses there uh, with the device, dropped it on the grounds, uh, and then either came back or went uh, back into the business and caused some kind of panic. And that's when uh, people there presumably called police and has prompted this kind of response. So i um, not sure if there is a suspect officially in this case. Uh, that's someone that they're looking for. Uh, we have not got a description. As we mentioned, we're just still waiting uh, for the uh, public information officer to make his way, Gary Caresco, to this scene uh, where we can get some more information uh, confirmed, some hard information. As we mentioned, this just goes out over the police scanner, uh, and we, uh, we can pass it along to you on this setting, unconfirmed, of course, uh, because this is still a very fluid situation. So. So I showed some folks earlier, but this is kind of how we uh, we are getting our information, uh, old style police scanner, uh, hearing what the first responders are saying. The sergeant on scene here taking control of this area and has been uh, periodically getting on the scanner and updating units. Um, as we mentioned, uh, in these situations, typical for the bomb squad to show up and respond. Uh, both the uh, sheriffs and the uh, B Bakersfield police have their own bomb squads, so, respectively. So uh, we're assuming just with the proximity here to uh, to Bakersfield police headquarters, it shouldn't be too long until they uh, deploy their uh, their bomb squad units here to the scene. Uh, we haven't seen either so far. We would assume they would come from this direction because headquarters is just about uh, three blocks uh, north of where we are. So uh, again, uh, this is uh, 10th and Chester. Uh, several people and cars having to be turned around after a two and a half block radius of this uh, area has been shut down. Uh, police believed they have found a suspicious device. Again, only went out as a pipe uh, that was found, and that prompted this response. Uh, streets shut off, people having to, to turn around. Um, unfortunately, it seems like a lot of people have become accustomed to this. They kind of know the routine, so to speak. You know, they come by, they look at the scene, uh, but. Uh, you know, if you've if you've lived here for some time, you know that uh, the uh, <laughs> this is the response that comes from some, from a lot of these situations. So, uh, of course, patience is uh, is a virtue in these moments, and uh, I'm sure once Bomb Squad gets here, uh, they can render this device hopefully safe. As we see Gary Caresco here with Bakersfield Police just arriving on scene in that white car, uh, and so we're going to be uh, staying with you here live. Hopefully. Uh, Usually in these situations, what happens is he'll go talk to the sergeant on scene, gather the, the latest information, and then brief us. So uh, a little bit of a, a process here, but we can, uh, we can actually try to uh, kind of uh, talk to Gary here before he uh, goes past the police tape so we can see if he has any preliminary information. At least we can just get confirmed uh, and then pass that information along to you. So we'll stand here. Uh, again, as uh, we mentioned, Gary Caresco with Bakersfield Police. 
Uh, coming to this scene uh, at 10th and Chester is where we are, our post, uh, as Bakersfield police have found a suspicious device uh, just about uh, two blocks from where we are, and that is what prompted this response. Okay, so we're seeing another car. Uh, we'd have to assume this has either to be a law enforcement unit uh, or not. Another car is quickly uh, backing up just uh, turned that corner there at uh, 9th in Chester and is now backing up quickly. Uh, we haven't seen any officers rush out to that vehicle to tell it uh, what to do, but it uh, doesn't appear to be a law enforcement car. And they have, uh, in no uncertain terms, been telling people uh, who cross this line or try to to get back. So we'll just have to wait and see what Bakersfield Police do here and who this, uh, this car is. So this appears to be someone in law enforcement, yes. So that would, that would explain why uh, no one rushed that vehicle initially. Uh, this individual is uh, dressed in uh, some kind of fatigues and is making his way slowly across the scene. So uh, we maybe presume this is someone with the bomb squad who is uh, in an unmarked vehicle who came to the scene just to uh, check it out. Again, Gary Carrasco just on scene here, uh, walked past the media tape without addressing us, making his way... Uh, to the officers here on scene, presumably to gather more information uh, and then pass it along to us. So again, we will uh, we'll hold our post here at 10th and Chester as uh, Gary Caresco walking towards, and uh, we've talked about it in this live stream, the sergeant on scene. That's how a lot of these situations play out. Uh, the sergeant will take control of this and uh, determine all the information. That'll get passed along to the public information officer, which then gets passed along to us. So we are here. Uh, we have quite a few crews here from 23 ABC on the scene. We have uh, crews here, Ken Masenchi, uh joining us here from court, just got out of there, uh, our photographer here, uh, uh, Ramiro, and then we have uh, Mike Hart uh, across the way there who, uh, who came out uh, when this started happening. And, uh, and so we, are, uh, we have you covered from both angles. Uh, this is though where police uh, will be briefing us on what's going on. And we saw just a moment ago um, uh, a car drive up quite uh, leisurely, which uh, <laughs> we didn't know if that was someone uh, who just didn't see the tape or uh, knew that uh, they needed to, uh, to be in the scene. And of course, we saw someone with what looked to be uh, some kind of uh, police or uh, military looking uniform on uh, who is now speaking with officers, someone presumably with the bomb squad or someone who has knowledge uh, of the situation and what to do. Uh, has made his way to the scene. He's parked his vehicle just about uh, uh, 100 yards from uh, from where that that suspicious device was found. And another vehicle now has made its way past the police tape uh, and is driving up to the officers um, and is uh, yeah getting out. So as we mentioned, you know. A lot of times in these situations, you'll see the the, uh, the bomb squad unit in its uh, in its large presence come to the scene, uh, drive up, but uh, maybe perhaps they are not going to come in that vehicle. And these are the individuals who are showing up to the scene. And and uh, but again, we are just waiting for official confirmation from Gary Caresco uh, as to what this is and to what they have. Uh, again, pointing out to that scene right there uh, where police found that suspicious device. And uh, yeah, so we mentioned um, bomb squad units. We're not sure if that is bomb squad, uh, but they are in plain clothes. They came in uh, what looks to be personal vehicles, uh, not police vehicles, and uh, have made their way past this police tape uh, with, with no hesitation. So obviously they know what they're doing and they know their role here at the scene. One of the individuals here walking, uh, you can see there in the foreground in uh, jeans and a t-shirt, and he is sitting there on the corner either taking a picture or looking uh, perhaps with binoculars towards that uh, location where they found that uh, suspicious pipe. Again, that has not been confirmed, uh, but that's what the call went out as, a suspicious pipe with something on the two ends of it uh, that, was, that was deemed a threat and has now uh, garnered this response. Uh, several units here, uh, see an officer with the canine unit, a sergeant, um, two plainclothes officers, uh, we can 
perhaps assume they have some sort of experience uh, with bombs and suspicious, suspicious devices, and along with the uh, public information officer who is going to hopefully help uh, us be able to, to tell us what is going on. Uh, so reading some of your comments here on Facebook, yeah, of course, uh, a lot of these situations end up to be not credible. Uh, but, you know, in the world we live in and in the, uh, of course, state of the world we live in, given uh, the events earlier this week overseas and uh, a certain response is warranted in these situations, um, of course, nothing near what happened uh, overseas. But, uh, f of course, uh, Bakersfield Police don't take any chances when it comes to, uh, to public safety. And, of course, this area heavily trafficked by people who walk on this street. Um, this isn't a side street. This isn't an area where... Uh, where it's uh, back in an alleyway or behind a dumpster. This is not a major artery through central Bakersfield uh, where we've seen already a lot of people turned away here by uh, the units on scene who are telling people uh, to not come through. But we've seen several people on foot trying to, trying to walk through. And of course, that's the concern is that that device, it sounds like it's close to the sidewalk uh, on the uh, west side of Chester, just right about at uh, 8th Avenue. Uh, so again, that's, uh, that's why this area has uh, been shut down and the responses happen. Again, comments reading here on uh, Facebook, what happened? So this call went out just about 8.30 as a suspicious uh, pipe. Again, that's not confirmed. Uh, we're waiting confirmation from uh, Bakersfield Police. But this went out as a suspicious pipe. Uh, and about a half hour later, dispatchers put out a description of a suspect who may have laid that uh, suspicious device down on the street. We're not sure the circumstances of why. Okay, so here's, uh, I'm going to interrupt that. Here's what we were talking about earlier. Bakersfield police uh, have, it appears, got their uh, bomb squad unit out, and they are responding to this scene. Uh, we saw a few uh, individuals in their, uh, what looked to be their personal vehicles, and uh, made their way to the scene. And we can probably confidently say those individuals are with the, uh, with the bomb squad, and they are, uh, they are making their way into the scene. I'll show you the uh, casualties of reporting. Uh, when you have uh, your Starbucks a little too close to the crime scene tape, uh, <laughs> that was my coffee. Anyways, well, uh, <laughs> we'll let that one slide for uh, reporter error, putting it too close to the scene. So, anyways, as we mentioned, uh, <laughs> we are live here uh, at uh, 10th and Chester, Bakersfield Police have set up now their bomb squad units and uh, are making their way uh, to this scene to, to check out what's going on. Um, we saw a couple plainclothes officers. I will not litter. I will be picking that up. <laughs> He's smiling. Uh, anyways, so yeah, Bakersfield Police uh, and along with the bomb squad now uh, kind of masking our vantage points uh, you guys want to move over here? This side? Yeah. Go in the corner here. I'm going to. I'll get you coffee next time. There's a trash can right in the back. Okay. Oh, thanks, man. Can I do that? Yeah, over there on the left. Left side? Oh, right there? Yeah. All right. Getting a little behind the scenes look here. The officer, I did say these guys are awesome. Uh, one of the officers with the tech unit <laughs> letting me throw away my Starbucks that I spilled. Uh, thank you. Yes, I need new coffee. Okay, so uh, police set up their, um, their bomb squad unit, kind of blocked our van on the street, and you can see. That is where police are focusing their attention, that black SUV. Uh, and uh, now officers first get on scene uh, threats and of course it prompts uh, we're now hey uh, Ramiro do you have the time you have the time? Uh, 9.29. 9.29. So, yeah, we're about an hour into this uh, situation, 
and uh, people are, uh, of course, being told uh, that they can't get through. There's uh, two pretty big businesses here uh, at this uh, location. It's H&R Block in Jackson. And uh, we have seen that they are not able to get through. And uh, they are being told to turn away. Uh, yes, uh, reading some of the comments here. Yeah, it's near that black SUV. Uh, we're about, let's say about 200 yards now away from that, uh, that scene. Bakersfield police have uh, set up their bomb squad unit in the center of the streets. We saw two individuals uh, in plane vehicles uh, race past this tape. And, and go into uh, into meeting with the officers, and, and I assumed that they were officers with the uh, bomb squad, and that appears to be true. Uh, so, again, uh, police on scene here, uh, and as we know, a lot of these situations play out. They turn out to be not credible, and the threat is, is deemed safe. Uh, but, of course, out of an abundance of caution, these scenes play out. Uh, where people are uh, told to turn around. Quite a bit of traffic here on Chester. This is not, uh, as I mentioned earlier, just another side street. This is Chester Avenue, a major artery through central Bakersfield. And uh, people have been told to uh, turn around and to, uh, to make other plans. There's a large church, you know, um, um, drawing a blank on the church on uh, South H Street, which is just, uh, I believe, St. Francis, uh, just on the other side of us. And... Uh, they, of course, uh, you know, there's a daycare there and people uh, who need to get through to South H and they're being having to uh, to make their way here, which could be adding some traffic on the other side of this. So, um, uh, yeah, I will not be getting closer. We were actually, uh, for people who were just joining us here, we were actually right uh, along with Mike Hart. Uh, and we were there at that corner where you see the... Uh, Excuse me. When you see the uh, tape set up, we were actually right there. Uh, the device is uh, right there, and so uh, we were uh, too close, and they and they decided to push us back. So, um, so this is where we are now. This is uh, 10th and Chester. Ken, is this now your story? Were you working on? I have no clue. <laughs> uh, Ken Masenchi, one of our reporters. Is, uh, is on scene here, along with one of our photographers. I'm gonna s move around here, as you can see. Um, again, we talk about the impact of this. A lot of people uh, counting on Chester Avenue today to be their uh, way through, either to the 58, maybe through uh, to their next destination. And they're learning uh, that this morning that is not the case. <laughs> you can see uh, now a line of traffic making the uh, left-hand turn onto 10th Street and uh, making their way on side streets. So if you live in some of these areas um, and, uh, under <laughs> and are wondering why so much traffic is flowing down your normally quiet street, uh, that is because a lot of this traffic is having to be turned uh, around and through some of these areas. Uh, people standing by on uh, the um, north side of the street here and uh, waiting for any word when they can uh, make their way back through this scene. A lot of times, uh, as we know from working in the media and from covering these stories, these, these take a few hours to, to sometimes play out and wait for the bomb squad to uh, make their approach and, and make their game plan. And, and that's when uh, everything can be rendered safe, if it is, and this uh, police tape will come down and traffic will start moving again. So, uh, as we mentioned, we're about an hour into this scene. Uh, police initially finding what they believe to be some sort of suspicious pipe and that prompted this response. Uh, this perimeter has moved about two times, uh, started quite small. We were actually there at 9th and Chester, uh, pretty close to where this uh, suspicious device was found. The sergeant on scene realized uh, the gravity of the situation and uh, then backed us up another uh, about half block, so or about a block. We're at uh, 10th and Chester. So uh, as we mentioned, we are just uh, standing by here and uh, bringing you the latest. We, we had hoped uh, Gary Caresco, public information officer, uh, would have uh, come by now and uh, at least address the media. Uh, made a pretty quick walk past us without uh, letting us know what's going on. Typically in some of these situations, the officers will uh, at least talk to us initially and say, uh, it is this, it is not this, and I'll bring you some more information. Uh, but Gary uh, did not do that and made his way uh, to 
the officers. So uh, we'll wait patiently as we do and uh, wait to get information from from Gary and uh, as to what's going on here. Uh, we know what the initial call was. Again, that has not been confirmed. The initial call, a suspicious pipe uh, and uh, a suspicious device that was found. And um, obviously it is, has prompted this response uh, from police, from the bomb squad, and, uh, and now has caused, uh, put a wrench in a lot of people's day uh, who were hoping to get through here on uh, Chester Avenue and move on to their business. We've seen uh, several people who uh, I presume work at H&R Block and or Jackson Hewitt, uh, which is uh, two big uh, <laughs> tax preparation companies who are, uh, would love to be pounding away at the keyboards right now and, and helping people out with their taxes uh, because we are just about uh, a few weeks away from April when the uh, final hurdle of uh, getting your taxes done happens. So uh, not convenient to them, of course, uh, uh, Bakersfield police don't pick and choose where these situations happen, so uh, police having to cordon off this area and uh, subsequently uh, keeping the people uh, from these businesses. As we mentioned, a uh, Bales Bonds uh, company, a uh, Boost Mobile, what looks to be uh, some kind of cookware, uh, I see a cookware sign, uh, some kind of another income tax uh, solution company. And uh, Boost Mobile, as we mentioned, uh, there's a restaurant, taco shops, a furniture store, massage uh, business, and uh, all shut down uh, and all restricted access. Uh, it is interesting getting to the... and how difficult it is to keep people out. Several times we saw uh, officers having to chase after someone who uh, decided to slip up uh, under the police tape and walk through, uh, and they have uh, told those folks in no uncertain terms, get back and stay out. And so uh, <laughs> that has been the uh, story here. We haven't seen many people try to challenge that process in the better part of uh, 20 minutes, as, uh, as now the scene has, has kind of worked itself out and, and has been established, uh, but, it is no easy task, and we saw that play out. As we mentioned, we were uh, just about a block uh, uh, south of where we are now, and uh, the sergeant came up to me and said, you guys got to go back further. We didn't you know, realize how close this device was, it seemed like, and, and they told us, you guys got to go back further. So, um, You guys able to see it? What's, uh, you can kind of see it? Looks like it. It's near that SUV, right? So uh, our photographer here is going to try to get a closer shot and see exactly. Once he gets it framed up, I'll be able to show you in the viewfinder here on our uh, live stream on Facebook and uh, show that to you. All right, let's check out what we got here. Is it that, uh, let's see. Okay, so you're looking live here. This is from our news photographer's camera. Uh, Ramiro, what are we looking at here? Which? Uh, so we're looking at this. Right oh, there. okay, right there. Yeah. As we as we mentioned uh, and thought, right along the sidewalk uh, is where we presume this was, and it appears that that's uh, what it is. You can see a box there in the foreground. Uh, some kind of trash along the tire of that SUV, which is where police have been focusing their attention. Uh, and as we mentioned, we were uh, quite close to that. We were about a half block uh, from, uh, actually less. We were, we were probably about uh, 40 yards uh, from that scene uh, when police came up to us uh, hastily and said, you guys got to go back further. So again, this is uh, right outside. I'll give you a, the vantage point here. We'll pop off that screen, allow the camera to adjust. Uh, and allow Ramiro to, uh, okay, we have uh, Gary Caresco here who is coming to our uh, our post here and going to brief the media. So, so again, we're going to live stream here with you on uh, Facebook as well as uh, turn to 23.com. You guys want me, can I get in the center here? Okay, uh, everyone good? No. Yep. Yeah. All right, you ready? 
Ready? All right, Gary, what do we got here? So this morning at about 8.15, uh, a witness saw a uh, male in his 30s drop a suspicious object uh, similar in appearance to a PVC uh, pipe bomb in front of a business in the 800 block of Chester here behind us. Uh, the officers that arrived on scene looked at it and thought it suspicious enough to initiate a bomb squad call out. As you can see, the bomb squad is here now and they will uh, evaluate the uh, situation. They'll look at the object and see uh, what the best course of action will be. Um, we have uh, Chester Avenue, both north and southbound between 8th and 10th Street uh, blocked off. Um, it will be blocked off for a uh, significant period of time, or at least until the bomb squad can render this item safe. Um, several businesses have been evacuated, and uh, I know it has displaced people temporarily, but we'll try to uh, get this handled as quickly and as safely as possible. You know, we saw as, as officers here were first on scene just the, just the situation when they try to keep people out of these scenes. You've been to a lot of these. Right. That's really the most difficult thing, right? You got, you got a, two tax preparation businesses who are probably busy on a day like today, given uh, the time period to April. So what do you tell people, and, and what's the difficulty on these situations for officers to keep people out? Well, you know, when we get these types of calls, you know, we have to take every precaution not only to keep the officers safe, but the public as well. That's our first priority. So um, if officers tell you to get back and stay away, it's probably a good idea. You know, there's a reason behind it. Again, we're trying to keep you guys safe. And, uh, you know, the officers are, are trying to evaluate the situation. They're trying to get as much information as they possibly can, all at the same time determining what needs to be evacuated and where, just so that uh, um, we have sufficient distance. You know, in, in case this is a real device and it does go off, we want people out of the area. What business is it in front of? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the, more on the suspect? I mean, we heard an initial description put out. Is there? There, there's nothing more. Um, the officers um, will follow up with that later on after this device is rendered safe, and, and then we'll go into the investigative side. Do you have any clue as to why someone would put that bomb there? At this point, no, we don't. Is there anything else you think is important for our viewers or listeners to know? Uh, just be patient with us uh, for right now while we have these streets closed off and the businesses evacuated. You know, as, as soon as uh, we can get this handled safely, we'll reopen everything. It is some kind of container? It is uh, some sort of uh, what looks like a PVC pipe. Um, so we're going to treat that as if it's a, a real device until we can determine otherwise. Obviously, um, no connection to what's going on overseas, but do these do those situations just add to a little heightened state of mind here at home? I mean, obviously, we, yeah, we, sure. we see the news and we see what's going on. They, they sure do. Um, you know, we haven't seen any, uh, any terrorist influence here in Bakersfield as of yet. But, but you just never know. So that's why you got to take every precaution and, and treat them as they're real until you can determine otherwise. Okay. Yeah, no problem. That was uh, Gary Carrasco with uh, Bakersfield Police, uh, who uh, just, uh, just briefed the media here about uh, an hour, hour and 15 minutes after uh, this initial uh, call went out as a suspicious device. You heard him uh, look to be some kind of PVC pipe. Uh, went out as a, as a metal pipe or it could have been... Uh, now we're, we're learning that officers here uh, determined it's some kind of PVC piping. They uh, are deeming this suspicious and are uh, having the bomb squad here, as we mentioned, uh, just arriving on scene about 20 minutes ago uh, to check out this uh, device. We saw two uh, officers here pull past the tape in what looks to be their personal vehicles, and they have since uh, rendezvoused with the individual who pulled up uh, in the large Bakersfield Police Bomb Squad unit. So, as we mentioned, if you are trying to get through this area, it is shut down uh, in multiple directions. We are here at 10th and Chester. Uh, you are not going to be able to get through all the way to about 8th uh, and just a little beyond 8th and Chester. So, the better part of two and a half blocks uh, north and south shut down on Chester Avenue, as well as some alleyways we can presume uh, in different areas. Uh, have been closed down. We've seen uh, a lot of cars and a lot of people here, and now Bakersfield uh, Fire Department standing by, uh, as which is uh, typical in all of these situations. As the bomb squad is going to start doing their information uh, and their investigation, uh, first responders uh, will stand by uh, to provide any assistance that they have to. Um, so we're uh, just watching live here as uh, a unit, uh, an officer with. Uh, what I believe is the bomb squad is, is talking to the fire department and briefing them on uh, what this is, where it is, and uh, Bakersfield Fire is going to position themselves the best as to uh, where they can. As we mentioned, a lot of people here are uh, trying to figure out what's going on, trying to figure out when they can get through, and uh, 
you know, there's a lot of the situation we heard Gary talk about. Uh, it is a nuisance and it is an inconvenience, but of course uh, they do this out of an abundance of caution. Uh, when they don't know what these situations are and they don't know what it is, uh, they take this kind of response. And it is a, uh, as we heard and as we know, it is a uh, brave new world we live in where uh, you cannot uh, take any threat lightly. And uh, we, we know from living in this community and others that uh, a lot of these situations uh, end up to be not credible and the threat is deemed safe. But, uh, of course, the Bakersfield Police do not take chances uh, and gamble in these situations. And, and they, uh, there is a typical response that is called, and this is that. As we mentioned, uh, we just saw Bakersfield Fire Department uh, firefighters here uh, standing by at 10th and Chester. Uh, presumably, uh, if someone gets injured or something happens, they are close by and able to help out. Uh, the bigger story here, of course, traffic, people uh, being turned around in either direction uh, for the better part of an hour now, not able to get through here at uh, 10th and Chester. Uh, foot traffic shut down, uh, people not able to walk through, and that is creating uh, a bit of a headache for folks. Uh, kids standing by in that corner, sitting, waiting, watching uh, this all play out. Traffic. Uh, as we mentioned, this is not just a side street. This is a major artery through central Bakersfield. And uh, people are having to be turned around, delivery trucks sent another way. And uh, that is all because of one device uh, set by one suspect, which you heard from Bakersfield police, uh, who uh, they don't have really a, a reading on who that individual is and uh, why that individual put the device down, but of course they are now left the task uh, to check it out. So again, we are live streaming with you here on Facebook, uh, 23ABC Bakersfield, along with turnto23.com, as uh, Bakersfield Police, with a uh, large response here to a uh, suspicious device that was found. I mentioned one of those trucks making an, uh, an alternate route around this area. Firefighters now standing by. Uh, which is uh, customary in these situations. Folks uh, just waiting in their cars to, uh, to know what's going on and to get back, presumably, to some of these businesses who are uh, being affected. Uh, if, uh, if there are two businesses who are probably affected the most on a day like today, uh, it would have to be uh, the Jackson Hewitt and H&R Block. Just about uh, a month out until taxes are due, and uh, we can only assume that these places are busy on a day like today and uh, they are not able to, uh, to have customers come in and to help people out. We were mentioning, um, we were the first here on scene and seeing the officers go door to door to a lot of these businesses knocking on the door uh, and making sure people are, were out and uh, not inside. So the, we can assume that all these businesses are empty here and uh, people are not able to get through. So we will uh, continue to stand by here and uh, bring in the live information as uh, police figure out so what exactly is happening. And now we see uh, a hall ambulance unit staging uh, just west of our location. That's typical in one of these situations. A call goes out uh, to fire and to, uh, to hall ambulance to stage, as they call it. Uh, and you are uh, seeing this staging play out. Uh, these are where these uh, units are are uh, hanging out and waiting. If they are needed, they are close by. Uh, just a moment's notice, they can come in and respond. So, uh, as we mentioned, these are a typical response from Bakersfield Police, but no doubt one that interrupts uh, folks' day and that puts a damper on uh, foot travel and uh, businesses in this area. So, if you're just uh, tuning into this, this is a now more than an hour long. Uh, situation that is playing out after a suspicious device was left uh, by an individual who has not been identified uh, and they Gary could not tell us uh, what business uh, it, that uh, device was found in front of but it's near that black SUV uh, that you see in the foreground and uh, again officers here cordoning off about two and a half blocks pretty large containment zone as we mentioned earlier, we were uh, first here on scene and uh, we're set up near that uh, silver SUV. My car was parked there and uh, officers came up to me pretty hastily and said, you guys got to move back a little further. Uh, just given the gravity of the situation and uh, understanding that uh, they wanted to, to move this uh, containment area just a little further back. So uh, you can see there, Bakersfield uh, Bomb Squad has set up their uh, large 
uh, mobile units and uh, quite a few feet uh, below on the other side uh, milling about there's a spool of uh, wiring some kind of uh, device that one of the uh, individuals is taking out and uh, moving around as we see in a lot of these situations they'll deploy some kind of uh, robots or some kind of device uh, to go up to this device and uh, look at it closely they can monitor what they're seeing on uh, their end from inside of that uh, that mobile unit and then of course you know in some of these situations we see them uh, activate their own small explosive device to blow up the uh, device that is suspicious uh, and that usually ends these situations but uh, just getting to that moment as you can see takes quite a bit of time uh, we are now about an hour and a half uh, into this and uh, police have not even uh, been able to go forth and uh, now we see uh, someone with the uh, okay now we see someone with the bomb squad unit in the full uh, I'm gonna try to steady the camera here in the full gear uh, who is making his way uh, to that device with a uh, string in hand from that spool of wiring that I was talking about uh, and now walking towards uh, that SUV where we saw from that uh, you saw from that uh, compressed shot in our camera you could see uh, some rubbish around some garbage around that uh, that uh, device and a box as well so uh, this officer in the full uh, bomb squad uh, uniform and outfit protective gear who was making his way to that device uh, with a spool of wire in hand uh, in his right hand and uh, another device in his left and he is uh, on his way now on the uh, sidewalk and is now set up just north of where and now mooking his way uh, closer to that device just right around where that uh, suspicious device was found. Again, walking slowly now uh, and getting closer to where this suspicious device was found. It is interesting to imagine that, uh, you know, these folks with the Bakersfield Bomb Squad uh, were going about their day and when they're told to uh, rush to a scene, put on this uh, heavy gear and, and uh, potentially put your life at risk. And so uh, we certainly have to give them some credit uh, to, to this response. And remember that uh, these are people, too, trying to uh, keep this area safe, putting themselves in danger somewhat to, uh, to check this out. So the officer uh, with the bomb squad is setting up some kind of, uh, we, we think maybe that, uh, that wiring in his hand, he tied it around uh, some, kind of, um, some kind of either block wall or something. And uh, the device just to his left uh, about 20 feet and he is standing there uh, now kneeling it's hard to tell from our vantage point I'm gonna go back to our camera uh, because we are presumably zoomed in on this and give you a better vantage point uh, to what I can't show you from my phone here we are can I get in on that uh, screenshot Hang on a second so uh, for folks joining us on turnit23.com, obviously you can see what uh, you see, but I'm going to try to show you here with the uh, on Facebook Live. Does anyone have a phone charger, by the way? And uh, I don't want to lose charge here. I'm at 10%. He has set some kind of... It's hard to tell. Set something down on the ground. What do you said down there? Just set something down. I don't know what it means. Huh. Around the corner. Hello. All right. So now we see uh, bomb squad unit coming back into focus here walking towards uh, where we were looking earlier 
set some kind of spool down and is now gathering that setting something uh, just to the left is that the device we think right there? no, no, it's some, some something he grabbed, something he took with him um, it is interesting to watch this play out live because there are certain uh, steps that these uh, officers with the bomb squad take some preparation that they uh, to the device and, uh, and and take a look at it. The device can't really see from this camera vantage point. It's just to the left of that light pole, okay. and the uh, officer with the bomb squad is uh, set up to the right from where we're looking. So he's uh, setting up some kind of. They're rolling on it back there for you. Cool. Mm -hmm. Is this is this cool if I show that? Yeah. yeah. Back in for you there. So again, that uh, uh, his own uh, material or, or equipment down and is now walking uh, past the device that we are all focused on and walking back uh, to his uh, unit. Uh, maybe the situation will be cleared out sooner than we think, and uh, or perhaps not. So again, we don't know how these situations exactly are going to play out um, as the bomb squad gets here and figures out what exactly they're going to do. Uh, but this officer in full uh, bomb squad uniform and garb is, is walking back to uh, his uh, guys in the units to presumably tell them what he found. And uh, they're helping him get the uh, helmet off there. So this could be just one initial sweep of... Uh, the device and then they deploy uh, something further or this could signal that this is over we don't know uh, some of these situations as we heard from Gary can go on for a, a long period of time uh, as officers are gathering uh, more tools a shovel they're uh, taking out of the side of the uh, unit there and handing it to uh, to one of the officers uh, one officer a shovel and bag in hand is uh, walking into uh, one of the businesses so unfortunately guys um, my Facebook feed is going to uh, to die out here pretty soon as my battery is not fully charged <laughs> I've been on this live stream now for about an hour, so oh, actually more than an hour, hour and a half. So it's uh, taking its toll on my battery. So if I lose you here on Facebook, uh, you can always go to turn to 23.com. We have the live stream up there, and I believe we have a link on our Facebook page, 23 ABC Bakersfield, so you can follow along uh, if you'd like to keep the most up-to-date information. So I'm going to end this live stream here on Facebook. We uh, appreciate you watching. As we mentioned, uh, you can get all the latest push alerts and information by downloading the 23 ABC News new mobile and tablet app, or you can go right now to uh, turn to 23.com, click on the video section and live video, and uh, you can continue to follow along. Appreciate you watching, and uh, again, we will continue this uh, live stream on turn to 23.com as it is going right now. So, again, uh, for folks. Okay, for a cut-in? Yeah. Well, no, 
off for the 11 o'clock. Oh, cool. So he's going to come back over here and he's going to go live. Okay. And I am... Uh... He's going to come here? Okay, cool. So I'll, I'll wait for him to come. So if uh, you, you're following along here at turn to 23com on our live stream, uh, just a few moments ago we saw one of the uh, officers in the full bomb squad uh, outfit make his way to that uh, scene which is near that uh, black SUV where uh, officials found that pipe, that suspicious pipe, and he uh, was setting up his own equipment there and uh, has walked since walked back to uh, brief the officers uh, who were right near that bomb squad unit. And uh, we are not sure if, if that is uh, a signal that this can be uh, removed quickly or if that is a signal uh, that this will take some uh, time. Uh, if you are uh, wondering what is accessible, what is not in this area, uh, between 10th and 8th uh, on Chester uh, is shut down. And uh, we can see just a little beyond 8th is actually closed too. So you could, you could bet about, uh, I'd say, almost a 6th Avenue uh, is shut down between uh, on Chester between 8th, uh, excuse me, 6th and 10th. Now I would would make a safe bet that that is shut down. Uh, and so a lot of a lot of the the issue here is of course traffic, uh, people who are not able to get through, buses who are having to make alternate routes, delivery trucks who are being turned around, and and uh, you know then you pull up on a scene like this, you don't really know what's going on. You got to ask the officers. And uh, one of the individuals here right behind us here talking to one of the uh, tech units with Bakersfield Police, asking them uh, what's going on and uh, getting the information that they will not be passing through uh, onto uh, their area. So. Uh, we've been talking about it all morning, but two of the biggest businesses here uh, between this uh, shop are uh, the tax preparation companies, H&R Block and Jackson Hewitt. And uh, those uh, companies, we saw employees trying to get into the buildings, uh, and they were told uh, to not go in. Uh, because their businesses are part of this uh, area that's been evacuated. And, and uh, just looking at the calendar, we all know just how busy uh, this area is. And just how, uh, <laughs> just how much those places are needed right now. So uh, they are not able to serve their customers uh, and uh, are having to turn them away, and, and the employee is not able to go inside. So as we mentioned, uh, we're just about an hour away from uh, 11 a.m. show on 23 ABC. Mike Hart making his way out to this scene. Uh, my name is uh, Tim Callahan. I've been uh, joining you here live on turn to 23com Mike Hart uh, is making his way out to this scene. Uh, and he'll bring you the latest information on our live stream. Uh, we are going to uh, have somewhat of a baton pass off here of the mic in a few moments. And he will continue to update you on the situation as well as uh, bringing the live updates on uh, 23 ABC at 11 a.m. Uh, when we are first on air this morning to uh, bring you the latest information here. Uh, but the recap here is uh, this area shut down between uh, 10th and uh, just about south of uh, 8th Street on Chester creating a, a headache, somewhat of a headache for folks who are trying to get through and get by and uh, for people who, uh, who want to get some information. So 